everybody welcome back ruben with texas all water fishing and today i want to talk to you about winter fishing so we are in the colder times of the year here in along the texas coast and it can be a struggle for a lot of people finding that winter bite getting on those winter fish and i want to talk to you about how i have been successful and the, and the tips and the tricks and the areas that I learned where the fish are and how to make the winter fishing beneficial to you. All right, before we go on, I want to thank everybody for coming back to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I'm not too sure why you haven't, but please go ahead and do so. Like the video, leave a comment, share, sharing is caring, really helps out the channel tremendously. We also have a Patreon group, so if you like uh, more insight, if you want more insight, if you like tips and techniques and deleted scenes and fishing reports and fishing forecasts and open invites, then join Patreon, help further support the channel. There is a link in the description section of this video, and it will take you right over to Patreon, and you can jump on board. All right, so what happens, what do the fish do? What is the fish activity during the colder times of the year? Well, the fish get a little more lethargic. They slow down quite a lot. They're a little less movement, less reluctant to feed. They're not as active. They, the bite slows down quite a lot, and they seek warmer water. And that means deep holes, drop off boat cuts any kind of where you have a change in depth it doesn't have to be like the deepest hole that you can find in the texas coast or in your area it's the deepest spot in the area so if you're fishing a particular bay or even if you're fishing a particular cove if there is a deep hole in that area then i guarantee you you're gonna find some fish in there that are seeking that warmth they're feeding on bait fish because the bait fish also want to find deeper water also want to find warmer water and they're gonna be down there feeding and you can really capitalize on them capitalize on the fish that are feeding on there and really stack up to those guys so deeper water bow cuts also bulkheads and a lot of these subdivision areas where you have houses on the waterway they have these bulkheads that are made out of concrete. The concrete will heat up faster than anything else around the shoreline. So as that concrete heats up, it will hold energy and hold that warmth. And you can really get on the fish as the day goes on. That concrete's going to get warmer and warmer and warmer. And there will be fish all over that. Another great area to target fish, and I have a tremendous amount of success, is around oyster reefs. It doesn't matter if it's spring, summer, but especially the winter. That oyster is going to warm up. That oyster provides shelter and refuge for bait fish or shrimp or whatever, any kind of crustacean out there. It's going to help find refuge away from the predator fish, and the predator fish are going to be all along that oyster. I've always had tremendous amount of success fishing the oyster and casting around the oyster. Yes, you have to be careful. It's a little Russian roulette. It's a little give and take, and there's a lot of different tips and techniques that you can use to ensure that you don't get hung up on every single cast. Muddy bottom. Now, muddy and thick, dark, nasty, stinky mud is... A great place to really target fish, to really target speckled trout, reds, even flounder during the winter time. I really got into some areas where we had some really thick mud. And although the water depth wasn't super deep, it was probably like around five foot, but the amount of thickness and mud and warmth that that mud held in I, we crushed it time and time again that is why it is extremely important for you to go out and fish different areas and remember take a fishing log what you make a fishing log remember when you got in remember the spring days the summer days when you got into some of that really nasty thick mud and the water depth was about five maybe even close to four feet eight feet deep but remember that it's why it's always good to go out no matter what the weather condition is it's always good out good to go out to explore good to go out go out to learn different areas and then you use that later on 
use that knowledge when you came across that oyster reef, when you came across that deep cut, when you came across that really thick, stinky mud, and use that information, use that knowledge. So when you are faced with some of the colder times of the year, guarantee you there's reds down there, bellying down. There's trout down there, bellying down and getting into that mud. Some of the fishing techniques that you can use and some of the baits that you can use is slower falling baits, slower moving baits. Let your lure sink down into those areas where you're targeting fish around those oysters, around that mud, in that deep hole. And give that slow falling suspending bait as it falls down. Give it a little twitch, a little pop, let it raise up, let it slowly go back down. Twitch, pop, let it raise up, let it slowly go back down. Because when the bite is slow, the fish are slow. When it's cold, they're slow. It can really trigger a bite using some of those slower falling baits. You're just barely twitching your jig head because you're in that. They're in that nasty deep mud, in that nasty mud down there on bottom, and they see that little bait twitch, 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 dying. Even if they're not feeding. A lot of times you will create a reaction strike and that is just enough to really trigger that bite and is just enough to really land yourself a really good fish. So fish slower, fish around the structure, fish around oyster reefs, fish around concrete bulkheads if you have any deep holes. Let your lure fall down to the bottom. Let it fall down in different water columns. Slow it down. Off the ledges, as you go into areas like deep holes, are even boat cuts that enter out of certain waterways it will be a little deeper off that ledge a lot of the time is where you can really find some of those fish it's a little bit of structure it's a little bit of safe haven for some of the bait fish and the predator fish will use that area kind of like a highway just cruising around or as the sun is coming up and it gets warmer. That shallower water starts heating up a little bit. They'll come out and venture out of their deep holes and come on that little ledge. And even on that little lip of that shelf, you can really find them. So it's always good to cast down into the deep holes and into the deeper areas and work your way up that ledge to pick some of those fish off. Because I guarantee you, they're going to be there. And a lot of times, they're going to be stacked out. That's what I mean about how to make cold winter fishing beneficial to you. When you find them, when you figure out what they want, when you figure out the reaction strike or the feeding strike that they are preferring, that's when you find, that's when they're stacked up and you can really really have a great day on the water. So you might be looking at me and like Ruben, I don't have any spots. <laughs> I don't know of any deep holes. I don't know of any oyster reefs in the area. I might know a couple, but I I really never caught anything in those areas, in those spots. Don't know any any mud. I might know a couple little mud patches, but I I, I don't know, Ruben. I, I just don't know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Don't know where to fish. Well, use Google Maps. Use Google Maps. I use Google Maps. A ton, a ton. When I'm looking at areas, even areas that I've been fishing for a while, I will still use Google Maps because there's always areas I want to explore. There's always another avenue I want to take. Or if the wind is blowing this way, maybe I'm going to fish on this bank that I normally don't fish. So use Google Maps. Google Maps is a tremendous tool. The satellite images, you can really see if you zoom in on some of the images you can really see some oyster reefs you can really see some deep holes you can really see some perfect grass lines fan cast fan cast fan cast you're not gonna see a lot of times during winter time you're not gonna see blow-ups you get to that deep hole you fan cast it you get to that ledge you fan cast it fish in 20 degree increments over and over and over you may drop anchor, you may set your power pole, you may be wade fishing or bank fishing and just have to stand there and fish for like 45 minutes to an hour. Slowing it down, throwing different lures, changing your jig head size, really slow your row. Be very, very patient. Fishing is a patient man's game. 
But I guarantee you that when you find those fish and when you figure out what they want, it's going to be an epic day. It can be, you can crush it. You can crush it on the coldest days. I've crushed it when it was 30 degrees. I crush it and put my hands in the water. My hands are freezing. Only people on the water. I'll be the only, one of the only people on the water. And we're out there destroying them. It's awesome. You can find working birds. You can find working birds. Fish underneath them. But the fish will never splash. They'll never show you they're there. Got to fan cast. Got to get around those oyster reefs. Fan cast are along the side of them. Fan cast. Try to cast over them. And use the cork. Use your scent. Use your scent. Use rattle. Use sound. Use a chatter weight. And change up your lure style. Slower falling. Lure styles. Color. Be ready to change it up. Go with the game plan. I want to try this lure, this lure, this lure, this lure. Use Google Maps. Plan out your day. Highlight areas you want to target and go out there and do it. Capitalize it. Do not wait for the perfect time to fish. If you can fish, then that's the perfect time to fish. If you struggle, you're still going to learn something. If you get on them, you're still you're definitely going to learn something. If you go out and scout an area, go with the intent to learn something. I mean, there is so much information that you can gain yourself by just going out there and being on the water. Can't learn nothing at home. You can't learn anything at home waiting for the weather to warm up. Get out there, get on the water. I love winter fishing. It is tough on me, you know, because I don't like the code, but I love winter fishing. I have some great, really, really great days on the water when it's cold. And no, it's not because I, don't, I know any secret spots. It's the simple fact that I fish an area, I'll fish an area, I'll fish an area, and I'll go, and I'll go, and I'll go, and then I figure it out. And you can too. It's, 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 it's tough, it's challenging, but you can do it too. So, there's no secret to winter fishing. Just got to go out there and do it. Got to target those key locations. Deep holes, it's warm. You want warmer water. Deep holes, drop-offs, ledges, grass beds, oyster reefs, shelly, rocky bottoms. The sun is going to warm up stuff that is darker. If you find something in the water, an uh, old power pole, an old wooden beam that's fallen in the water, power line, a log, it doesn't matter if you're freshwater or saltwater fishing, it's going to hold or that warmth in, and you're really going to get on the fish. Trust me. Another great tool to use, hook and line. Hook and line. I haven't used this in years. I've been kayak fishing for probably like 10, 12 years. When I first started kayak fishing and weight fishing, this was my, this was my Bible. This was my biggest tool that I took with me. And I looked and I planned out my trip with this and Google Maps. You can't you can't go wrong. It's tons of knowledge in hook and line. But hey, you know what? I hope this helps you. And I hope this has encouraged you a little bit to getting out. I know it's cold. I know the bike can be tough. Getting out, going out. You know what? Maybe you go out and you take some live shrimp with you. And you explore the area a little bit. And then you go back with some lures. Maybe you go out and, and fish with the gope, the dreaded gope, and you explore a little bit. Maybe you go out with fish bites and see what is in the area. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with fishing. There's nothing wrong with it. But hey, I hope this helps you. Uh, I hope this helped you with your winter bite. And I look forward to hearing from you, some of you guys and, and some of your tips and techniques. If you have any, you want to share with everybody else, leave it in the comments section of this video. Like I said, I've been, I've been kayak fishing 10, 12 years, and uh, I, I don't pretend to know everything. I, I'm like just barely, barely, I'm just, I feel like I'm just barely scratching the surface of the knowledge that when it comes to fishing and, it, and 
really targeting species and targeting areas and targeting different seasons. So if you have any other information, anything that helps you, any tips or techniques that you want to give me or give a viewer or a subscriber, please leave it in the comment section below. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And yeah, looking forward to hearing about some of y'all's winter fishing trips and how you limit it out. <laughs> But yeah, but thanks for coming back. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, share. And until next time, I hope that you catch me hooking up. Thanks.